So welcome everybody um, to this tutorial session. I'm, I'm actually impressed with the turnout. If, if you guys keep up like this, I strongly believe that you will have very, very good scores in your AP and you will actually understand the subject, which is what I want. Um, this is actually going to be every Friday. So let's begin. We are going to start with the MCQ and then we are going to migrate to the free response um, as we move forward. If you have any questions, please ask. So question number one, a physical quantity R is calculated using the formula R equal to 4A squared bracket B minus C where A, B, and C are distances. What is the SI unit of R? Now understand that this R is a physical quantity. By definition, is a physical quantity is anything that can be what? Measured. A physical quantity is anything which can be measured. Remember we said that for an equation to be correct in science, the units and dimensions of all the additive terms must be what? The same. So R is going to be equal to 4A square B minus 4AC. Now A and B are all distances. This would mean that the unit for R will be the unit of A squared, which is going to be M squared multiplied by the unit of what? B, which is going to be M, and this will give you um, M cubed. So the answer definitely is D. So SI unit doesn't mean like M versus M cubed, you have to go with M cubed. Why can't you when I say SI unit, listen, that is a very good question. When you say what are the SI units of R, it means express R in terms of SI units. And we know that, remember the table I gave you, there are seven, of which you need to know only about four. You have the meter for length, you have the kilogram for what? Mass, the second for what? Time, and you have capital K for temperature, capital A for electric current, and uh, you have MOL for mole, and so on and so forth. But in all of these, these are the most important in AP Physics 1. Now, which of the following quantity is a vector quantity? We know that this guy is what? A scalar. We know that this is a scalar. This is a scalar. And this is what? A vector. So the answer should be D. A particle travels along a curved path between two points P and Q as shown. The displacement of the particle does not depend on D. In class, what did I tell you? The displacement of the particle does not depend on the distance, the distance travel or the path taken, but depends only on what? The initial and the, the final point. Remember that the displacement between two point delta x is given by x final minus x y initial. So based on this equation, it doesn't matter what part you take. In other words, it doesn't matter the distance between the two points. It depends only on what? The initial and the final point. This is the final point, and this is the initial point. So the answer should be C. All right, this is an interesting question. Now, during 18 minutes, during the first 18 minutes of a one hour trip, the most important thing is, is an hour trip, so the total time is one hour 60 minutes. A car has an average speed of 11 meters per second. Now, what must be the average speed of the car during the last 42 minutes of the trip if the car 
is to have an average speed of 21 meters per second for the entire trip. So the, a trip is divided into two sections. One and section two. Um, section one takes 18 minutes. Section two takes 42 minutes. We know the average speed for the, the average speed for the second section is given, right? No, the average speed for the first section is given, which is 11 meters per second. So we need to calculate the average speed. So now look up, please. The, the best way for us to attack this problem is this. We know that V average is total distance travel divided by total time taken. We know the average speed V1 is equal to D1 over T1. This means that D1 should be equal to what? should be equal to v1 times t1 and that should be 11 meters multiplied by 18 minutes multiplied by 60 seconds divided by one minute that will give you Remember that the car has an average speed of 21 meters per second for the entire trip. That would mean that that would mean that V average is equal to D over T. We don't know D, but we know that this is 60 one hour. One hour is how many minutes or how many seconds? 3600 seconds, right? And all of this should be equal to 21 meters per second. So the total distance for the entire trip will be um, 21 meters per second multiplied by 3, 6 seconds. And what will this give us? 75,600 meters. Now D2 will be equal to D minus D1. Who calculated D1? Who calculated D1? We gave the formula right here. 11,880 meters. And what is this going to be? So the average speed will be the total distance, which is 63720 meters, divided by 42, multiplied by what? 60. And that will give us. 25.286 meters per second. So the answer here should be C. It's 25. Now let's move on to the next. Which one of the following is not a vector quantity? We know that acceleration is a vector quantity. This is a vector. Average speed is a scalar that is a vector and that is a vector so the answer should be B the next question is interesting is which of the following situation is not possible a body with a zero velocity and a non-zero acceleration this is possible mm -hmm. who can give an example an object that is instantaneously at rest. A typical example is an object at maximum height, right? So A is possible. An object travels with a northward velocity and a <coughs> northward acceleration. Uh, an object speeding up, so this is perfectly okay. Um, an object travels with a northward velocity and a southward acceleration. An object slowing down, this is perfectly okay. An object travels with a constant velocity and a time-varying acceleration. 
an object cannot accelerate with a constant velocity because a is equal to a change in v over a change in y t if the velocity is constant it means that the acceleration must be y zero so the answer is b this is not possible the next question says i actually modified this question a little bit the figure shows a motion dictator that measures the position of a card on a level frictionless surface which means that the card moves to the constant speed. If the card moves to the constant speed, we are automatically going to what? take away that, take away that because the speed here is what? The velocity is changing or the speed is a curve, right? So our answer is going to either be B or D. All right. Remember that the direction of the card of the velocity is indicated in the diagram. If the direction of the velocity is indicated in the diagram, understand that motion to the left is positive. If the motion to the left is positive, it means that the velocity of the object should be positive. So the answer is B. You should be cautious here. When I gave this problem as homework, the motion to the right was positive. The answer was D. Um, so you should be cautious about the direction. Now the next question Two objects A and B accelerate from rest with the same constant acceleration. Object A accelerate for twice as much time as object <coughs> B. Which of the following? Remember, the both starts from rest is equal to x naught plus v naught t plus half a t squared. It begins from rest. Let's assume from the origin. This is zero. This is zero, therefore x will be equal to half a t squared. Now the question says that, listen now, a accelerate for twice as much time as b, which means that x of a is equal to, this is x of b, will be equal to half a bracket 2t all squared, which will be 4 bracket half a t squared. It means that the distance A travel is four times the distance B travel. So which one is correct? The answer should be B. Now an object is moving along a straight line, is decelerating. Deceleration is negative acceleration. Deceleration is negative acceleration. Now when the acceleration of an object is negative, it only means that the final velocity is less than what? The initial velocity, which indicates that the velocity is decreasing. What does it mean for the velocity of an object to be decreasing? This is a little tactical because this guy here is what? A vector. The velocity can be decreasing while the magnitude is increasing. For example, if an object is accelerating in a negative direction, the velocity will be decreasing even though the speed is increasing. Do you understand the difference? As a result, the answer here is C. Many people choose D. This will only be true if the object is what? Slowing down in the positive x direction. If the object is slowing down in the positive x direction, the value of the acceleration is positive. What if A is positive and V is also positive? The object will not be decelerating. You understand that, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, the next question. Ball A is dropped from rest from a window. At the same time, ball B is thrown downwards and ball C is thrown upward from the same window. Which statement concerning the balls after their release is necessarily true? Which statement concerning the balls is necessarily true if air resistance is neglected? A. At some instant after it is thrown, the acceleration of C is zero. The truth is neither balls, it, for all the balls, A is always equal to what? negative g 
all the balls strike the ground at the same time, this is a big no. Because they have different heights, right? And they have different initial speeds. All three balls have the same velocity at any instant. This is a big no. All three balls have the same acceleration at every instant. So the answer here should be what? D. Um, now question 13 to 14 refers to a graph. The question, the, the question says an object is moving along a straight line in the positive x direction. The graph shows its position from the starting point as a function of time. Various segments of the graphs are identified by the letters A, B, C, and D. The first question is, which segment of the graph represents a constant velocity of positive 1? All you need to do is, the slope of a VT graph signifies what? Velocity. So all we need to do is calculate the slope. The slope here Let's say S1 will be equal to what? This is about there. This is 0, 5, 7.5 minus 0 divided by what? 5. Um, that will not be equal to 1. S2, let's take, now it's positive. So we will totally ignore <coughs> this region because the slope is what? Negative, right? And the slope here, S, is equal to what? Zero. So let's look at D. D from here to here is the slope will be equal to zero minus minus 10 divided by from here to here is also what? 10. So this is going to be equal to plus one meters per second. So the answer should be D. <coughs> the answer is D. Now, what was the instantaneous velocity of the graph at the end of the 8th second? The answer is D. Because of this, I actually added two points to everybody when I was grading the free response. <coughs> because um, the answer key showed it was C. It was a mistake, but I actually added two points to everybody. Now, the next, during which interval did the object move in a negative direction? What interval is that? C, right? Because during C, the velocity was negative. So the answer should be B. B. Okay, great. Question number 14. Question number 14 says, The motion of a car and a truck along a straight road are represented by the velocity time graphs in the figure below. The two vehicles initially are initially alongside each other, which means they start at the same point. At t, what is true for the two vehicles since t equal to zero, which means we need to know what is true for the vehicles here. Let's observe this because many students are confused with this. We are confused with this problem. Understand that the truck travels with what? A constant velocity which means that the acceleration of the truck is zero at all times the car initially starts with a velocity of y v equal to zero and accelerates with a constant acceleration but at point d what is true the thing that i see at point d is that the area bounded by the graph under the truck is greater than the area under what the car do you see that? Exactly the distance traveled by the truck is twice the distance traveled by the car, according to the graph. So my answer will be A. This is a very good question. So my answer is A. The next, the graph below shows the velocity time graph of a body that begins moving from rest at the origin accelerates uniformly to a velocity of 30 meters per second for five seconds then continue with a constant with a constant velocity for the next 10 seconds now the question is determine the total distance travel by the body first of all you need to understand that the area 
bounded by a VT graph stands for what? Displacement. The area bounded by a VT graph stands for displacement. So we need to split this area into two. This is A1 and this is what? A2. A1 is a triangle which is equal to half base times height which should be equal to half multiplied by 5 seconds multiplied by 30 meters per second and this will give us what? Um, 5 multiplied by 15 in other words 5 times 3 is 15 right? so 5 times 30 is 150 150 divided by 2 should be 150 divided by 2 should be 75 meters a2 is a rectangle, so the area will just be length times width. Now, the <coughs> length here, you need to be careful. The length here is 15 minus 5, which will give us 10 seconds. So we have here 30 meters per second multiplied by 10 seconds. This will give us 300 meters. So the total distance travel will be A1 plus A2, which will be three seven five meters so the answer here is beautifully d now the next question the graph below shows the position versus time graph for an object which begins moving along a straight road from the starting point the various segments of the graph are identified by letters a b c d and e great question which segment of the graph represents an object at rest? We know that one, the slope <coughs> of xt graph is equal to what? Velocity. And uh, we also know that when the velocity of an object is zero, the object basically is at rest. So the question remains, where, along, where on the graph is the velocity or the slope zero? It is at this region so the answer should be the answer should be a now during which interval or intervals did the object move in the negative x direction away from the origin in the negative x direction away from the origin take note about this if look up everybody if x and v are of the same sign the object moves towards or away from the origin away from origin if they are of opposite sign the object will move towards the origin now let's look at here this is the origin this is our origin, which means that here the object is at the origin. It means that here the object is where? At the origin. You must understand that. If, because this is a position versus time graph, so wherever the graph intersects the t-axis, that is the point where or the time where the object is where? at the origin so initially let's look at the motion the object begins moving initially the object is 10 meters away from the origin the guy stands there for a while about two what, seconds moves with a constant velocity towards the origin continue moving away from the origin at what at this particular junction what happens he changes direction moves back towards the origin and continue moving away from the origin in the positive direction so in this region x is positive v is negative so the object is approaching the origin from where from the right do you understand that so the object is moving in the negative direction but approaching the origin now here x is negative 
and uh, v is negative so the object is moving away from the origin towards where the left do you understand that now at t equal to six seconds he changes direction moves back towards the origin and keeps moving away from the origin so what where what which which one is the correct answer the region where the object moves in the negative direction away from the origin so that should be region yeah that should be interval c so the answer is b which segments of the graph represent the the object moving towards the origin with a constant velocity that should be b and the e no wait yeah that should be option b and option d great so the answer is b now which segment of the graph represent the object moving away from the origin with a constant speed yes c and e now great question the diagram below shows a card capable of firing a cannonball vertically upwards suppose the card is moving forward with a constant velocity of 10 meters per second while a cannon is fired vertically upwards in the absence of air resistance would the cannon land in front behind in the barrel or none of the above is correct so basically the cannon will land where in the barrel the reason is because when the cannonball is fired upward with the speed v or y it is still moving forward with the speed v naught therefore as it is moving upward it is also moving what forward hence it will land back where and the barrel because the barrel and the white ball have the same horizontal velocity that is important for you to note now let us move on to section two now keep this graph in mind because i'm gonna let's first of all analyze this graph before we start answering the questions <clears throat> first of all keep in mind that let's keep in mind that one when when a and v have the same sign the object will be speeding up now when a and uh, v have different sign the object will be what slowing down okay in region a at this region v is greater than zero a is less than zero so the object is definitely slowing down what happens here at this particular time point in time is the object at the origin or is the object at rest remember that this is a velocity time graph so what does it mean for a velocity at the t-axis it means that the velocity here is zero so the object is at rest that uh, the object is the acceleration zero here yeah. is the acceleration zero at this point no. it means that the object is only at rest temporarily it means that the object is only at rest temporarily or instantaneously so in region b we know that v is less than zero a is less than zero so the object definitely is what speeding up in the negative direction now what happens at c does the object change direction or is at rest okay when when v is less than zero the object is moving to where the left when v is greater than zero the object is moving to where the right you understand that right now look at this situation in region b the velocity is negative in region d the velocity is still negative which means that in region b and d the object is still moving to the left so is there a change in direction here there is no change in direction at region what c do you agree with me but at region c is the object at rest the object is not at rest because the velocity of the particle at c is not what 
0. So the object is not at the rest. So what happens at C? The object is transitioning from speeding up to what? Slowing down. Do you understand that? The object is transitioning from speeding up to slowing down. Now look at C. Look at D. Here, V is less than 0, but A is greater than 0. What does this mean? It means that the object is slowing down. So point C is basically the transition from speeding up to slowing down. It's basically the transition from speeding up to slowing down. What about E? What about this region? You realize that here, the speed is constant, but the acceleration is what? Zero. The speed is constant, but the acceleration is zero. Now, if the speed is constant and the acceleration is zero, is the object moving to the right or moving to the left? Point. Most students wrote that the object is moving to the right, which is not true. It's moving to the left because the velocity in this region is what? Negative. Remember, the sign of velocity indicates the direction of what? Motion. Keep that in mind. The sign of V indicates the, the direction of motion. If the velocity is positive, the object is moving to the right, right. If the velocity is negative, the object is moving to the left. We just saw that the acceleration can be negative and the object is still moving to the right, but slowing down. You understand that, right? And the velocity acceleration can be positive and the object is moving to the left and slowing down. So, at region F, this region, V is less than zero, a is greater than zero, which means that the object is slowing down. slowing down. Here, V is greater than zero, A is greater than zero, which means that the object is what? Speeding up. Speeding up. In this region, V is greater than zero, but constant. Here, A is equal to zero. So what happens in this region? Is the object moving to the right or moving to the left? Is the object moving to the right or moving to the left? The object is moving to the right with a constant velocity. Now, this is interesting. What happens in this region? Is this physically possible for an object to instantaneously increase its velocity tremendously in an infinitely no time. Is that possible? No. So this is practically impossible. So what happens here? The object is moving to the right with a constant word, velocity. So let us fill this table. Yeah, you could complete the table at home. Okay. So please, we have already so we've completed that table upwards. The time at which the, the object is at rest is t equal to 4 seconds and t equal to what? 15.5 seconds. Because these are the moments where the graph intersects the t-axis, right? At this moment here. Indicate every interval in which the speed of the truck is increasing. This was an interesting question. What, were, what was the time interval? The speed of the truck was increasing at interval G. Speeding up at interval B and at interval G. The speed is increasing whenever the object is what? Speeding up. Do you see with me? Mm -hmm. So the answer was B, G. And the only explanation that I expected from you guys in these two intervals, V and the A are of the same sign.
V and A are of the same sign. Whenever the velocity and acceleration are of the same sign, the object will be speeding up. We've talked about that. Indicate every time this is a repetition. Yes, please. A is slowing down. Suppose the driver of the truck continues to move with a constant speed after tw the 20 feet seconds. Now, it means that after the 20 feet seconds, the object keeps on moving with a speed of what? With a speed of what? 10 meters, 10 meters per second. If you identify that you, you earn a point in the, during the exam. This means that the initial velocity here should be what? 10 meters per second. And the question goes as thus, follows. The truck driver sees a pedestrian crossing the road a certain distance, so 75 meters ahead. He slams on the brakes, causing the car to decelerate uniformly to rest. So V final here is what? Zero meters per second. Suppose the deceleration A is negative three meters per square second. Did the truck avoid an accident from occurring. So all we need to do is calculate the distance traveled during the deceleration. And to calculate that, we know that V final square is equal to V initial square plus 2A delta X. This would mean that delta X is equal to V final square minus V initial square divided by what? 2a, which is 0 square minus uh, 10 meters per second all squared divided by 2 minus 3 meters per second squared. And uh, if you calculate that, you will end up with delta x equal to what? Can somebody give that to me? 100 divided by 6 should give us 16 16.6 meters. Do we just um, get rid of the negative sign? No. This is a negative. It counts off with this negative. Wait, what is what negative on the 10? Oh. There is no negative on the 10. Even if there is a negative, there is a square there. It cancels. This negative cancels this negative. So you realize that this is less than 75 meters, right? Mm -hmm. So the accident was avoided. Will be done very soon. In the space below, draw the acceleration time graph. The acceleration time graph, I'm, you, you had to do some calculations, but I'm going to do some estimates here. Remember that in region A and B, the acceleration is constant, like that. In region D, the acceleration is positive, so it goes straight to being positive. Region E, the acceleration is zero. This is region A plus B. This is region D, and you have to label that. And then here, this is region E. And then here, the acceleration. This is region um, F plus G. It goes back down to zero. You need to calculate. This is region H, and uh, this is region S. Some people would have done a spike here like this. There is a sp um, If you did a spike here, still I could have accepted that because in that region the acceleration increases infinitely, but which could not happen naturally. 
So this is how your graph would have looked like. So uh, papers, do you want us to label it later? In, uh, do the calculations. Okay. Be specifically be aware of this and the relative heights of this by calculating the acceleration here. Okay. Uh, it may be the reverse. Um, so the question two says three identical spheres, three identical spheres, a, B, and C are released from a device at T equal to zero from the same height H. Note that the height is the same as shown in the diagram above. Sphere A has no horizontal velocity and falls straight down. Sphere B is, is given an initial horizontal velocity of magnitude V and travels a horizontal distance D. In other words, this distance from here to here is D. And uh, sphere C is given a horizontal velocity of 3V and travels a distance R. In other words, this distance from here to here is R. Now, as express all your answers in terms of capital HGV and fundamental constants. Assume air resistance and the effect of wind is negligible. Take the origin to be on the ground. Your origin is here. That was a trap. Now the question is, which spheres hit the ground at the same time? In a paragraph length response, they hit the ground at the same time. For three reasons. One, they have the same height. Two, the X motion is independent of y motion three same vertical acceleration same vertical acceleration and four projected at the same time projected at the same time now the question is on the space below sketch and level graphs of the vertical component of the velocity and the position remember the position y is given by h minus half gt squared, we did derive this in class, and vy is equal to negative gt. Therefore, if we draw a graph of y against t, it's going to look like this, where this is capital H and this is capital T, and the graph of vy against t will have a negative or slope and the graph will look like that. The next question says, we need to derive an expression for the time it takes for the sphere A to hit the ground. Show all your work. Remember the origin is on the ground. The most appropriate step for you guys was to begin with your table. Y naught is H. Y is what is just, when it hits the ground, Y becomes what? Zero. The acceleration, the acceleration is negative g. And now the question is, this derive an expression for the time it takes for the sphere A to hit the ground. Show all your steps. So begin first by doing your table as always. Y naught is h. Y when it hits the ground will be zero. A is negative g. Now t is what we are looking for. VOY is zero. VY we don't know and we are not interested in. So the equation that we will use is Y equal to Y naught plus VOY T plus half A Y T squared. And we know that this is what? This is H. This is zero. So this will give us h minus half gt squared. And all of this is equal to zero when the particle hits the ground. This means that h will be equal to half gt squared, which implies that t will be equal to the square root of 2h over g. Now, almost Everybody, almost everybody got this right. Now, this question had a typographical error, but I graded 
um, it assuming all the possibilities. It says that on the same set of axes, on the space provided below, sketch and level graphs of the horizontal component of the velocity and the vertical component of sphere B and uh, C as a function of time. Understand this, but on the graph, it gave but the horizontal position. So for those of you who do the, I will do the graphs for both. X of B is equal to V O B T, which is just basically V T. X of C is V O C T, which is basically 3 V T. So the graphs will look like this and like this. Now the question I want to ask you guys is which one is B and which one is C? You see that the slope here is higher than the slope here, right? Do you see with me? So this will be C and this will be B. People got it the opposite. Though they got it the opposite, I still gave the same points. I was actually super lenient. Um, so this graph here, if you would have added x of c equal to 3vt, and uh, here x of b is equal to vt, you would have received more points. But the question actually wanted you to sketch the word vertical position, which means understand that y of b is just going to be equal to h minus half gt squared and y of c is just going to be what h minus half gt squared so um you realize that um they have the same initial height and they have the same time of flight the same acceleration due to gravity so if, if we would have plotted a graph of t versus y it was just going to be one just like that yeah, it was supposed to be vertical oh, position. Okay. Now, but here, this is a typo. Oh. So I gr most students drew this, so I graded it anyway. Now, the next graph is that for veloc horizontal velocity. You realize that V sub B is equal to V O sub B plus A X T, which is just going to be V. And V sub C is V O sub C plus A X T, which is going to be 3 V. So the graphs will be as nice. This is V C, which is 3 V. And this is V B, which is V. So if we would have put 3 V here, no, 3 V and V, that would have been great. That's how your graphs would have looked. Beautiful graphs. Now the next question says, derive an expression for R in terms of D. Remember that X of C is equal to R, which is just going to be VOC multiplied by T. And this is going to be 3V capital T. We know that X of B, which is D, is VOBT, which is just going to be what? V that. According to this equation, capital T is equal to what? D divided by V. Which means that R is equal to 3V bracket D divided by V. The V's cancel and you are left with 3D. Hence, R is equal to 3D. The derivation wasn't difficult. A whole six points. Now, the next question, which is the last, was actually the most interesting. Derive an expression for the average speed of the car so that it lands, so that sphere C land on the car. Remember, some people thought that B will land on the car, which is not true because when, according to the question, when the spheres are launched, Immediately, this card is pushed, right? 
And the question is, what is the average speed of the cart so that C will land on the cart? Which means that the time it takes for the cart to travel from here to here is the time it takes for C to do at 4. Do you see with me? In which case, in which case, average speed, V average is equal to what? Total distance over total time which is just going to be total distance here is 3d minus d the total time is capital t so we are going to have 2d over t but we know that d itself is equal to what vt so this implies that v average is equal to 2 vt over t the t's can cancel and this is going to be equal to 2v. And that is all I needed from you. The average speed is 2v. Thank you everybody for coming. I really appreciate your time. Um, I'm going to see you guys next Friday. Now, um, I'm going to give a take-home test next weekend. So next Friday will be a review for the take-home test.